everybody, and welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claddy, and I'm here with the amazing Dan or DTM. Dan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I just can't believe that we get to communicate across the world through video. So I'm ready. Fantastic. And talking about across the world, let us know in the chat, where are you watching from? I'm always super hyped up about our international community. Here at Adobe Live, we have usually this amazing network of creative students, professionals tuning in from all over the world. So I'm always super excited to see where you are watching from. And most importantly, what, where are you watching us in terms of app? We are here on Adobe Live streaming on Behance. Make sure to join on b.net slash Adobe Live. So I will be able to read your comments, read your questions, and most importantly, throughout the stream, pass your question to the amazing and talented Dan that's going to be here with us today and tomorrow. And of course, in fact, I can say already here in the chat, we have a, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, people saying hello and we have a lot of movement going on, which is fantastic. I can see uh, Tamika in the chat, the amazing Wade, keeping us company and sharing all these useful links. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have RB, what's up? Nice to see you. Kevin, Sean, Musa, Norsh, so many of familiar faces and also new faces uh blessing odari richard anika nice to see you fantastic so so many the chat is so busy we have egypt in the house new york city new zealand the amazing steve ciao nice to see you steve um by the way that me and steve usually do a uh, italian lesson across <laughs> across all the streams and uh, me and Dan we're having a little bit of a chat before so um also we can add Spanish to the list mm -hmm. verdad sí mucho español <laughs> para toda la gente que habla español y le gusta hablar en español but mm -hmm. we do keep the chat in English so make sure right. to uh, write in English in the chat Megan Richard Omar from the Bay Area Maryland in the house Fantastic, lovely. And for those who don't know it yet, I'm, I'm streaming here from Manchester, UK, while we have Dan from Atlanta, correct? Yes, Atlanta, Georgia, baby. Beautiful. Right, so before we get started, a little bit of a housekeeping first. I want to make sure that everybody knows that we are on the second week of the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with Sam Peterson every day at 9 a.m. Pacific. So make sure to not miss out those fantastic challenges. Mm -hmm. You can find the replays and the new challenges just by scrolling down here into uh, our uh, Behance page on Adobe Live. And um, of course, now it's time to introduce you the start of uh, the day, our amazing <laughs> uh DTM or Dan for friends. Yes. <laughs> and yes. I want to start by sharing your wonderful website, uh, which features one of your main collections that we were talking about. Again, as I said, behind the scene, we're having a little bit of a icebreaker, getting to know each other. Super excited to be here and be your host. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. we can see your screen. Uh, we can see your website already. So make sure to go ahead and uh, check it out. It's uh, Scully's seriesart.art and I'm going to zoom in so you can actually go ahead and see uh, the actual URL and I'm sure that um, per perhaps Wade in the chat can share it for everybody as a clickable link so everybody can go ahead and uh, check your artwork and here we have your Instagram, Twitter, all sorts of accounts but since it's your work I'm just gonna mm -hmm. you know pass it on to you let us know a little bit more about yourself and of course what we're going to be creating. I'm just going to have a quick brief introduction. I already know you are an amazing 2D um, uh, character designer and uh, but tell us more. You know, I like people to introduce themselves and of sure. course tell us what we're expecting of these two days of fun here at Adobe Live. Awesome. Let's do this. So my name is DTM. You can call me Dan. I go by either one. I'm cool with it. That's my name. I'm used to it. So whichever one you use is fine. I, I like drawing. I've been drawing all my life. And uh, if uh, we were talking Spanish earlier and my parents are from Mexico, I was born in LA. And so with my Mexican background, skulls and the Day of the Dead, it's a big, big deal. And so I've been drawing skulls all my life. And so the last uh, few months, as I've gotten to learn more about NFTs and art collections and uh, marketplace, I decided, you know what, why don't I put some of these things that I'm into that I like and see what happens. And that's what you're looking at right now. Scully series is a combination of comics, film, TV, animation, uh, popular culture, Aztec culture, Mexican culture, all thrown in together 
into a collection that we can all and have a conversation about these memories where we first came across these particular characters. And so we have a skull head, we have a body, and me and a few other artists are adding on different elements to each skull and body to then come up with a character. And we all ha have a good time talking about this character, remembering certain things. And so like on the top right of that screen right now on my website is Descatlipoca, that is an Aztec god. I did study in Mexico for a few years when I was a young teenager and uh, mythology and history are my, my, my uh, passion when it comes to knowledge. And so I'm bringing that in into my art. I love to draw and I wanna do that. And so that's what we're looking at in the Scully series. So I'm still working on the series. There's gonna be 144 total. You'll see them pop up on the Scully wow. series, Instagram and Twitter. And, uh, and so we're planning on launching a bunch of them this month, uh, and then next month, and finally at the end of November 22nd, all of Are them. Are we going to have up. some merchandise? Like, I want you know, that's the idea. Yes. I, I want to have a t shirt some... with this. <laughs> Right, by the way, right, I'm, right. I'm yeah, a big fan of the of the uh, Maya Aztec work, and one of mm -hmm. my first tattoos is actually my Maya sign, which is uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's called Pop. It's like a a priest, with, and uh -huh. I, I have a tattoo of this little symbol of a priest that is looking at my back. So uh, I think that's so cool, and I recognize it right away in that in that artwork. <laughs> the same the same style is so yes. so spot on, so beautiful. Thank you, um, thank you, thank you. But I think so, if you want to jump into your screen and you can yes. show us more. Sure. So today we're going to be drawing uh, a character because that's what I do. I'm a 2D illustrator who loves drawing people in some things, but mostly people. And I like drawing characters and giving life to things that don't exist. I create my own world. And so right now I'm in Adobe Fresco. As you can see, I have a ton of uh, character art here. And so a lot of my artwork ends, as, uh, ends up as a vector. So today our focus is vectors and character design. And so I'm just going to create a document, find the square one. When I do a lot, of, when I do my character art or vector illustrations, I'm not so concerned about the proportion of the design. If it's a uh, landscape or portrait, I'm more interested in uh, making sure that a square is good because sometimes some of this artwork ends up as a sticker. And so I already want that proportion to be uh, easy to use in different other uh, print or uh, web places. And so a square is good for me. I do also I create a document. I go ahead and call it something. So this is the, we're live right now. So let's let's go ahead and say where this is the live uh, illustration. As you can see, I'm inside a fresco. So now I can just save this file and that's it. And the first things that are ready to go in fresco is the pencils. Those are our pixel brushes on the top left. And uh, in the and then the next brushes that I'm gonna use here today are our vector brushes. And what's super amazing about vector brushes is that we're creating vector art that you can edit in Illustrator and use to whatever size you want. So if I wanted a banner of a Scully behind me, I can print that out and it still look clean and crispy because it's a vector illustration. And that's where uh, vector brushes come into play is that we get this, uh, it's, a, it's a vector that will be able to um, transform to any size we want. However, it is still going to look sharp and clean no matter what size we make it. And I love vector. And we were talking earlier and you mentioned Adobe Draw. I've been drawing with uh, iPad since Adobe Line, Adobe some ideas and then Adobe Draw. And what I like about Adobe Draw and now Fresco is these vector brushes. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get started. And uh, along with and, the uh, Dan, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you right away. I, I mentioned that I was going to be the annoying voice interrupting your <laughs> <laughs> your stream. I wanted to say, as probably everybody guessed, um, not only Dan or DTM was, was here before at Adobe Live with Budoval, uh, so he's already familiar with the wonderful Adobe Live, but he also runs his own stream here on Behance, so make sure to go ahead and check out his Behance by clicking on his name uh, under the description. And by the way, Dan, I wanted to 
say that there is a lot of love about your work. Everybody was uh, already, you know, loving all the Scully and they, they look, uh, <laughs> RB was saying Maya is equal Mexican for, for Claudia, you know, uh, definitely my knowledge is, is less broad than yours and I'm super, super intrigued and, and I, I love to, to learn more. Uh, but everybody is saying fantastic work, Angels in particular, Omar, amazing work, DTM. So not only we have a super proficient illustrator here and we're going to have fun learning how to create a characters, but also is a proficient streamer. So I'm basically going to, uh, you know, you know, lay back and enjoy it and watch with you guys. But don't forget, I'm keeping your eyes in the chat. So feel free to let those questions coming about Fresco, about freelance life, about streaming. We are here to reply to your questions live. And of course, um, and also I wanted to make sure to remind everybody that we have an artist spotlight coming at the end of the, the, the stream. So make sure to stay tuned uh, until the end of the stream to check out who's going to be the artist of the day. And you have the chance to share the link of the artist spotlight of your dreams that you wish to feature here that'll be live. And of course, that could be yourself just by clicking on the artist spotlight button located at the very top of the chat here on B net slash adobe live so if you haven't done it yet make sure to tune in on behance if you're watching from youtube head to behance in order to promote your own work that's the place to do it or any of your favorite creatives here at adobe live um and i'm gonna pass it back to you then i mean i'm loving it i'm already you know uh watching and enjoying so please please take over <laughs> all right <laughs> well big ups to everybody who's leaving comments in the chat uh, I, I love to read them and, and engage with everyone, except that my eyes are on the iPad. So sorry, I can't respond to you individually, but thank you for joining us in the chat and leaving comments. As, uh, that's the one cool thing about streaming on Behance that I really love is that we're artists among other artists. This is like the whole world of artists in one place. And, uh, and so we kind of have our own language. We can understand each other when we say certain things related to art. And that's what I, uh, I love about being a Behance, and so keep those chats coming. All right, so my process when working on a character, and uh, this is my sketchy character. I'm not gonna draw a Scully character. I wanna keep it family friendly. So we're gonna do a sketchy, and so sketchy is his name, and uh, only because uh, I like to sketch, and, uh, and so his head is made up of uh, sketchbooks. So bam, a lot of us, when we first start drawing, we uh, come across a black book or a sketchbook. And, uh, and that is like what the first place where you dump your ideas into. And fortunately with digital, like the iPad, Surface and all these other devices, uh, you can carry all uh, your whole portfolio plus your work in progress, plus your uh, paintings and sketches and designs all in one device. But uh, I still love the feel of paper and pencil and ink and uh, which is where Inktober comes into play because then you get to uh, use traditional materials when you're drawing. But, but back to the character, his name is Sketchy. He has a sketchbook as for his head. I haven't thought of this idea all the way through because like, well, do they draw on their head? Do they open the book in their head and start drawing? I don't know. I have to think it through a little bit further, but I have other supporting characters already, including Tracy and Octavius. So here is Sketchy. He loves drawing. He carries a pencil, a big pencil. I'm a fan of pencils. As a matter of fact, my Apple pencil has a skin on it and it looks like a number two pencil. I know. I noticed that. I was like, I was literally like zooming in on the screen and be like, what is he using? Um, so it's just like a, a, like a rubber skin that you can put on top. Yep. It's a rubber skin. So, cool. so this is the number, the, the, the pencil uh, two. And uh, so I don't need the top at all, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you slide it in, you slide the pencil in, then to put the top off and uh, <laughs> the skin is thin enough that it'll attach to the iPad and charge and Wonderful. stuff. And so, yeah, this is super. I love so it. Cool. I love it. <laughs> so cool. So cool. I love, so that, I mean, to me, I mean, I love the apps and I love learning all the cool tricks, but those are like, you know, the spice of the stream are finding yes. all these unique <laughs> things that everybody uses. That's so cool. Yes. So there you go. Go get you one. <laughs> it's only like 10 bucks, Amazon, something like that. I bought two because I really like it. So, uh, so my character has a big pencil 
And uh, I haven't thought of a lot of things about how, how these characters' lives, uh, lives go. I do know that Sketchy and his crew, they travel the universe, bring in the art life gospel to everyone. And the first step in the art life gospel is to enjoy the creativity. Be creative and just enjoy yourself. Try things out and see how they work out, see how they look. We can't fix a drawing until we draw it. And we won't know what we need to fix until we have something that we can look at and fix. So that's, uh, that's the first uh, rule or uh, point and a commandment in the gospel of the art life. And I'm making it up as I go. So there we go. This is the first time I said it this way. All right. <laughs> so I have a head. Uh, as you noticed, when I was uh, sketching earlier, I started with a body. I just do like an upside down U. And like there, there goes the body. I do sometimes do the, under, the, the U for the bottom of the body. But today, I'm going to keep it flat like this. And so, boom, there goes the body just like that. Bam. I try to keep it simple. I found my shortcuts for my process, for my character. So, you know, today you can try some of the shortcuts that I use and some of the steps. Find other artists whose art you admire and then look at their process. And as you try out your, the different steps that other artists use, you will find your own art style. And so and I, and that's what I'm going to stop you there a second because I really want you to like, you know, please repeat and really break down this concept. I mean, the beauty of Adobe Live is to learn together. I believe mm -hmm. that that's such a safe, fun space. And those concepts, you know, of course, bef you know, alongside learning how you create your own art, I think that are so important to share with, you know, those who are starting. I think there is a lot of mystery behind the wall of what's happening behind the scene. And if you can just dig a little bit more into this topic of how to get started and not mm -hmm. be afraid of, you know, everything that you were saying. I just wanted to gotcha, gotcha. Just go a little deeper <laughs> into it. I can I do that it. because I'm like you, Claudia. I can talk all day about art, okay? <laughs> I just need my, home, my own Adobe Live channel that is on 24-7 <laughs> and I can talk and talk about art. So basically what I have done is uh, come up with a few steps, a process, if you will, that works for me when I'm drawing. So I don't have to uh, think a lot when setting up a, a character. So right now you saw this happening here. Let me go ahead and start a new sketch. And so there's various methods and I've, I've, I'm gonna uh, add another part to it. I did not go to school, art school. I do not have art degrees. I do not have certificates. I do not have any diplomas of any kind except high school. That's it, nothing else. I've learned everything by doing and asking questions and learning from others. I don't like to say I'm self-taught because I did not teach myself. I was not standing there saying, draw this and then sitting down drawing it. Uh, what, I, what I did was I learned from what others put out, what others uh, sh shared with me, what others put on the internet, put on books, magazines and whatever. And so I, along the way, I studied enough to pay attention to some of the things that artists do and say so basically we have the blocks this is these are the ones that i that i have um remembered and added to my the processes that i remembered and picked up along the way and added to my creative process so we got blocks which is cool and easy and you know what the day that minecraft came out i was like that is just the straight up blocks and now we have characters uh, based on the blocky kind of uh, art style that um, process. So I thought that was super cool. A lot of people also do the uh, stick people, the, the skeleton. And that's cool too. You can do that. And then uh, from there, we also have, and, uh, and I never got into this, where people do the silhouettes. Like, I, that's not a thing for me. I don't, I, I could just never, I couldn't see. I can't see, especially when I have like a, like um, uh, comic books as my starting point. A long time ago, the only place you can find tons of artwork from your favorite artists was comic books. And so, so when I look at the comic books, I see a head, I see like the shoulders and the, the hand and the arm and, and so on, right? So that's what I see when I was drawing with comic books. And so to me, that was super easy to, to um, trace over some of these uh comic book characters and uh and bam so there you go they got the hand uh and, and then boom we have a character like so 
so through all of the different things that I've seen, plus, you know, believe it or not, I used to work out a long time ago. I was in the Marine Corps. And so a long time ago, I'm talking about super long. And, uh, and so I got to know the muscle groups. I got to know how the body moves and what uh, muscle looks like when, it's bent, when the arm is bent one way versus when it's bent the other way. And so taking all of those things together, I found a way for me to get my drawings uh, down to a few simple lines and have the steps. You can either start here, here, or here. It's your choice. But once you start with one um, figure, then you start filling it out. So I like the, the skeleton. I like and the I'm, skeleton. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt in a second because um, I, let me see who in the chat. Norsh, we're saying it looks like Sketch was wearing the Infinity Gauntlet when you were focusing on the end. And, and I was like, that's so funny because <laughs> that's exactly what I thought as well. Um, also, we have Paloma saying, hi, everybody. Uh, what a treat. Two of my faves. So, oh, I think I lost them. two of my faves, uh, DTM and Clady. Yes, we are super yes. hyped up being together as well. That's very, very exciting. Yes. Um, and we have a question from Richard. DTM, would Sketchy trade his pencil for a Wacom stylus? Um, you know what? Sketchy will draw on anything with everything <laughs> at any given time or moment. What about a notice. spray can? Yes, you know a, a marker, a crayon. Give me crayons. I'm fine with that. Give me the, the simplest, cheapest crayons that are just nothing but butter with color on them. I will use them to draw because creativity is not limited by your tools. Creativity is only limited by your own sense of what is what can you create right now with what you have available to you. So there it is. That's Damn. fantastic. I, I completely yeah. agree. And I and you know, that's another reason when we were chatting that I said. Don't be afraid. Just please show your own workflow. That's the beauty of Adobe Live that you really get to explore how uh, the apps work because everybody uses it in a different way. So there is no right or wrong. And mm -hmm. again, the, the tools are not a limitation. And I, I'm loving the apps and the way they are evolving because I feel like they're really a very successful product, a very successful app is doesn't make you feel like you're even in an app. You're just doing and exploring whatever you feel like you're exploring with your creativity and you're expressing yourself. Um, right. So uh, that's super amazing. I can see we have, uh, oh, just every, everybody just say, saying, saying hello. Uh, we have new people join, uh, joining us. Um, Potato Zubair, Robert, Biola, just going to say hi to everybody. Um, yes. Fantastic. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free. Uh, I think that there was a question. I'm going to go ahead and try to scout it again. Um, but it was about streaming live from Fresco. So maybe you can, I'm just going to look for it real quick so right. I can sure. uh, see exactly who asked the question as well. But I was having cool. a bit of a giggle before when you were talking about, you know, creativity and, and we we're talking about the, uh, the fact that our little sketchy can draw with anything. I have a photo that I must remember to share with you, Dan. I'm sure you will enjoy it. I have actually okay. a lucha, luchador mask that I used when I uh, do my walls. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right <laughs> oh gosh i'm sure you, i'm sure you're gonna uh enjoy it so i'm taking notes to share that and, and probably i can share with everybody maybe tomorrow i'm gonna all let's, right let's do that tomorrow so we can have a all a little giggle uh nice. cl cloudy in a mask but in the meantime while you while you keep going um i'm just gonna go ahead and look at the at the streaming question and see if i can very cool find it for you and i'm gonna interrupt you again of course <laughs> no cool, cool. interrupt me when you find the question and so right now what i have done is i i told you exactly how i start i start with a very basic shape and uh and i'm not using layers right now but it's very important that sometimes it's best to use a layer for uh your stick figure or blocky figure and then uh or in this case you know the, the way i did my figure today all right and then do another layer and take that first layer turn it down, get the next layer. And now you start filling in the details and things that you want to feature here in the, in the drawing, but it's still very rough. It is still very rough. It's not until you have the third layer that then you're starting to add, you know, very clean and clear uh, elements in your drawing accessories, what is the art uh, character doing? What is he wearing? Why does that character wear that? And so on. Uh, an, another amazing Behance uh, Adobe, Adobe um, creative 
who's been on Behance many times. His name is Orlando Aracena, Aracena, and he, he goes by Mexifunk. That yeah. guy, I was watching one of his interviews one time, and he said, layers are free. And I'm sure that, that he got that quote from somewhere. But the way he said it, I was like, wait a minute, we're already using the app now. Like, it's not <laughs> going to cost you anything to just add another layer. Do not, do not skip your process. Do not skip a step because through all of those different layers, you're going to tighten it, tighten your drawing, your illustration, your character to the point where like now you can see clearly what this is supposed to be about. Yes, absolutely. And I had the wonderful opportunity of working with him during a Creative Pro, one of the Creative Pro Network event, event. I think it was the Illustrator Summit 2021. We were both uh, speakers and we had a lot of fun. And I, I heard that quote as well. So I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you brought it up and, and also that you mentioned him. And for those who don't know him, just go and, and check him out. Uh, I think that's his, uh, his uh, Instagram name, correct? Uh, Mexico Funk. Maxi Maxi Funk. Funk. Maxi Funk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I found a question from Siko or Hiko. Hiko, what is this? What is this streaming the iPad with? And then we have Steve replying, iPad can stream on its own or it could be OBS. So, of course, here we have our wonderful Paco behind the scene. He's always making sure that we look nice and pretty since the old times <laughs> in the Adobe studio in San Francisco. Um, and uh, now here remote as well. He's always here helping us out, making sure everything runs smooth. Audio, video, that's all his magic. Um, and uh, that's that's what we're, you know, the way that we're streaming today. So we have this wonderful uh, Adobe Live production with the Paco behind the scene. And uh, uh, also uh, Steve was asking that, uh, was was sharing the fact that iPad can stream on its own from Fresco. So uh, can you talk uh, to us a little bit? Yes, yes, Tell let's us a do little that. bit more about that. Yes, Please. you know, um, we have right now, because of Behance and Adobe, we have a lot of technical things going on and a few people involved in the process, which is great because now I could just focus on drawing and don't have to worry about anything else. But when you stream for yourself, um, there are a few tools out there and Adobe has made it very simple and easy that you don't need anything to stream out of your device. Of course, you will need an internet connection. And so a strong Wi-Fi connection is uh, appreciated so that we can see your stream without uh, any issues, but on the top right side of the screen right now on Fresco, you will notice a few icons on the top right. And it's the third icon from the end. It looks like a little square with an arrow going up. And if I click on it, and it's right here, I'm just gonna hold my uh, uh, pencil right over it. Then you'll notice where it says, uh, has a few um, menu items and the last one says live streaming. I'm not gonna click on it because I don't wanna interrupt the live stream that we're working on. <laughs> That's gonna put a lot of extra hey, weight into the connection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're doing good right now. We're doing good, so don't mess it up then. Um, but yes, once you click on that live stream button, if you have been approved by Behance to stream to your Behance profile, then that option would be there. I'm not sure how far that program is and how available it is to all. But if you are approved and you are able to stream to Behance, then that will be there. You can click on it and uh, and then you can start adding the text that you want people to know, adding the title, what was this uh, stream about, and then go live. And magically, just like that, you are streaming from Adobe Fresco to Behance. The only thing is you cannot, like I'm doing now, you cannot leave the drawing area. If you leave the drawing area, it cuts off the live stream. And so right now I left the drawing area and you can see that there on my live drawing, it had a little two blue circles and that means that it was syncing to the cloud and now it's just finished syncing. So a lot of times I like to do that, even though we do have a button that says save now up on the top where it says live, I can click on that and click on save now. But I'm so used to making sure that I save my work that I will go to the home screen to force the app to say, okay, Dan, I got you. I'm gonna go ahead and save this to the cloud. So that's the only thing. You don't wanna do that when you're live streaming. You wanna stick to the screen. You can't just switch around different screens and do other things on your iPad because then that's gonna interrupt that connection and, uh, and then your stream will be over. Uh, and then people are gonna be wondering like, what happened? What's going on? So yeah, that is a super easy tool. I'm thankful for that because sometimes you feel like I can't share with the world what I know unless I buy expensive cameras and expensive computers, 
you know, I do have a lab mic here because I'm a little extra anyways, and I do have <laughs> amazing lighting, but that's me because, you know, uh, I like to say I'm a hoarder. I like buying <laughs> stuff. It's like, yes, I need that. I don't know what for, but I'm going to need it. And, uh, but the reality is, and just like art, you know, you can draw with everything and anything, just grab, I've seen people draw with pancake mix. They draw pancake pictures <laughs> on the grill. Like, come on. Yes, so, yes, so yes. <laughs> Right, right. yes to that yes to that i absolutely that that's basically my instagram feed people drawing with coffee people drawing with food and uh Dele i'm gonna i need to go and i'm very horrible with name unfortunately but there is uh uh one amazing illustrator and also a adobe max speaker that is now starting a creative cooking class as well and i need to go and and figure her Instagram um, out in order to share it with everybody. But that's exactly what she's doing. She's literally um, using food to, to create art, uh, which is amazing. And uh, we are in the chat. The chat is absolutely loving those tips. Um, uh, Hiko, oh, again, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it's saying thank you so much. This is very helpful, uh, which is fantastic. And we have a little bit of jokes going on regarding uh, food. I think that Bliss was uh, leaving us for a second in order to go and get some food, but <laughs> it decided to stay with us. Uh, and uh, we have a little bit of jokes saying going on that um, saying that, well, let me go ahead and see and go ahead. I always want to make sure that I mention who said uh, what. Mm -hmm. I like to give a name to all these comments. But the old topic was uh, was about um, going ahead. Oh, Steve said, this is an amateur stuff. You always bring food with you at the start of the stream. <laughs> and, and then he goes on adding, this is why I have a fridge besides my desk. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I'm not going to show you my cup of coffee, but it's right there. And it's huge. I have co like coffee and usually walnuts with me. <laughs> That's like... <laughs> <laughs> my family says that I have like my bird food <laughs> next to yes. my desk because you I'm have to big... keep your body fed so that you can keep going. Otherwise, no, 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 no. And you have to remember to stand up and stretch every once in a while, because once you get into your zone, like I'm in my zone right now, I can talk about art and continue drawing. It didn't take me long to get into my, my the pose that I want. Um, but uh, but sometimes you spend so much time deep in thought, lost in this in, in this uh, creative zone that you forget this five hours is two hours is whatever and so no 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 yes have you something to chew on something to drink and uh, stretch out every now and then but yes share that uh that food that food stream i'm looking for it i'm looking for okay. it and in the meantime i can say already that wade as usual been amazing and sharing links clickable links here in the chat so remember if you're watching from youtube go and head out on b.net slash adobe live that's the place where you can write your comment and we'll be able to see your questions see your comment by the way if for whatever reason like now like the chat likely is super lively today and we have so many am amazing people chatting and having fun here with us uh but do make sure if for whatever reason you really want me to um, make sure that I see and pass your question uh, to Dan or we can read your comments, feel free to uh, paste it again. If for whatever reason I don't see it, we have a little bit of a delay between the stream and the chat. So, you know, have a little bit of a patience and uh, feel free to repeat it again. So it's most likely for me to go mm -hmm. um, and, and make sure that I do read it. Dorina Boneva is saying, I love this character already. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, we have a very cool question, which brings us a little bit back to the whatever you were talking about before in terms of styles and creating your, your styles. We're asking you to dig, dig a little bit deeper. And uh, we have another question that will bring us back there uh, from Shashank saying how to find the style of illustration. It's, uh, it's the easiest thing in the world. It's the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, it's like me saying it's easy. It's like saying, you know, you can get in shape, Dan. It's easy. You know, uh, it's easy because there's no secrets to it. And the steps, steps are very evident. The hard part is you have to get used to doing it constantly, 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 constantly. So if I wanted to build muscles, I had to be in the gym constantly, constantly, constantly. I don't know exactly how constant, but I know that it takes a little extra time. And I like to call this my gym. This is my gym. You know, so you may be a master at lifting weights. You may be a master at karate. I'm a master at this thing right here, at drawing this thing. And that is because I spend a lot of time drawing constantly, constantly. And, uh, and the way you find your art style is that 
in my case, this was what worked for me, is, is uh, drawing the things that I admire, drawing the characters and illustrations that are made by other artists whom I admire. To this day, my style continues to evolve and change, and it depends on what I'm doing that it will determine what kind of style I use, either comic book style, animation style, realistic style, you know, counting the heads uh, <laughs> uh, to, to make up the figure style. It all depends on what you're after. And so a lot of the times now in my work, I wanna have fun. I wanna have cool, fun characters because I am a professional artist. I get paid to draw. I have clients whose drawings I do, they're corporate, they're very clean, they're, they're straight. They're, they're, they have a purpose, right? Illustration has a business purpose. And so I have to draw what, uh, what, what I'm contracted to draw. And so when it comes down to the things that I like to do is characters. And let me tell you, I started my art career as a tattoo artist. I started oh, getting wonderful. paid to draw tattoos. So when you said earlier that you had a tattoo named Maya, I was like, oh, that's cool, cool, cool. Because I, I am tattooed everywhere. <sighs> that was, uh, <laughs> I started that a long time ago in the nineties. But, and so, and so part of that process as a, as a professional artist was drawing the things that people ask you to draw. That's the business, you, you, you know, that, though I have trained tattoo artists most recently in the past few years. And I tell them, draw what you wanna draw and the clients who want that will come. So you don't have to like chase the art style. You don't have to, but it helps to know how to draw all the different things that piece people could possibly ask for. And so you have to practice, practice, practice. And so what I like to do is find a few artists whom I like. And so comic books, I'm talking about Simon Bisley, Frazetta, uh, Alex Ross, um, even Bob Ross. And, uh, and so, they, so you find some artists you like and you say, well, how did they do that? Frank Miller, how did they do that? Todd McFarlane, how did they do that? So now we have video in a lot of YouTube channels and everybody's sharing their, their YouTube uh, process, which is great. But in the olden days, we had to just study the book, study the drawing, look at it, look at the lines and say, hmm, maybe get some tracing paper and trace it over and so on. And there's nothing wrong with tracing. Just don't claim it as your own on, on the course. internet, right? And if you do post it on the internet, say, hey, I was practicing. So that way those fans don't get, don't get a little hype about it. In any case, uh, that is how it starts. And that's how I started. And of course, a long time ago, I uh, used to pay attention who was the Mr. Olympia and Miss Olympia. So I was drawing lots of muscles. <laughs> and, uh, and so when it came time to anatomy, it was real easy for me to pick it up. And, you know, like when you, Batman is my character, that's the one, oh, you know, okay. character. That's right. I'm Batman. <laughs> and so <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, and so <laughs> When I, so, so when you're looking at some of these kind of characters, it's like they have their suits painted on. It's not, it's not gear. They don't have anything that they're wearing. It's like they painted on the, the suit, Spider-Man. Like that looks like who, how, how, whatever, how, who, who's your tailor? In any case, when you're looking at these drawings, you start to see all the muscles, the butt, muscle groups the muscles that go with the arm, the muscles that go with the wrist, with the, with the elbows, with the shoulders and so on. And that's how I started to just mimic what I saw, figuring out, okay, how could I draw Batman? If I was to draw a Frank Miller Batman and I'm gonna copy that picture there, I'll trace it a few times until I understand what lines it took to do that drawing. Once I understand, understand those lines, like, oh, that line was made because they twisted the wrist this way because the, the wrist went that way, the pencil went this way. And, and as you start to pick those things up and me memorize them in your body, then you can start leaving the trace paper behind and start drawing it yourself and paying attention to how you move the pencil. It's kind of like writing, writing as a child when you're very little and you don't know, you just want to go like this to, to write on the piece of paper. No, 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 <laughs> calm down. Go ahead, control, control. And you will notice that the bigger the drawing area, the smoother it's going to be when you start using your elbow and your wrist. You have to use your elbow and your wrist. And sometimes I can make a straight line just by going straight down with my hand pulling with, from the elbow, pulling from my uh, the uh, shoulder. It's, it's, and as you say, it's, it's basically like a gym, like training your muscle like you do in a gym. That's right. 
And right. I'm going to I'm going to stop you a second because we have so much in terms of more questions <laughs> that are getting generated by our discussion. And I also I don't want to go uh, too far from um, the, the, the artist that we were mentioning before, which is, you know, again, an extension we were talking about in terms of practicing and, uh, you know, where, where it can take you. So the artist and also Max speaker uh, that I mentioned is Lauren Home. Um, her handle is a uh, home sweet home on Instagram. And hopefully Wade will be able to share the link as I have uh, shared with him the specific link of the food art that she's creating, which I think is mind blowing. So make nice. sure to go ahead and, and have a look she's basically doing cookies and drawing on them like it's beautiful 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 what? beautiful illustrations so we're going to have that link available in chat and also just a quick shout out for those of you who are not aware of what max is max is the biggest creative conference that is going to be once more this year available free for all live online uh, from the 26th of October, there is going to be so much going on. Uh, I know some of my friends, they literally booked their days off from work to be able to <laughs> participate to Adobe Max. It's such a mind-blowing time to interact live with uh, so many amazing artists, creative from through all over video, uh, illustration, above and beyond. Uh, the actual Adobe Max event uh, I participated to was in LA a few years ago. Now is free for all and is live online. So make sure to head at max.adobe.com. Uh, I also shared a link with Wade to my two sessions. They're going to be live during uh, during Max. Again, 26 to the 28th, the Creativity Conference. Make sure to go ahead and register to have access to a, a huge amount, I don't even know, thousands and thousands of free assets, class, classes, labs, and so much more uh, together. And of course, don't forget that Adobe Live, we're going to be part of uh, Max, so much content. And there is a, a new, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneaky, sneaky preview uh, to a new activity that is called Brain Date that is going to go on during Max as well. Um, is a little bit more like of a private conversation, so much going on. So I just wanna make sure to mention and squeeze in this conversation then. So sorry to all done, all your, all your, your uh, wonderful uh, conversation about practicing drawing. And I'm gonna squeeze in also a couple of questions as well that were generated by uh, your story. Once- All right, hold uh, on one Bruce, second to the question. Yeah. Uh, when you check out Adobe Max, check out last year's sessions. I have three sessions in there at Adobe Max. And then two years ago, I was there in person hanging out. It was beautiful. I love Adobe Max. You need to uh, make sure you register because it's free and you get so much out of it. So there you go. Go ahead. Questions. Absolutely. So we have Bruce, uh, which was loving the story, uh, by the way, how DTM started tattooing. So that's the first one. And uh, the second one is from Moses, uh, which is asking what you should consider more when designing a character. Um, is there some, are there some rules to follow regarding shapes of the body? So here it is. Uh, those are the two questions for now. I can see more coming. I can see Wade sharing the link on the chat. Thank you, Wade. There we go. So let's start. How did you go into tattooing and tell us more about drawing characters and the rules about drawing characters, please. Gotcha. So like I said, I didn't start, I didn't go to college. I don't have art degrees, but what I do have is boxes and boxes and boxes of art, canvas and canvas and canvas of art. I have a storage that's full of art and, uh, and I haven't looked at some of those drawings in a long time. So to me, I did not understand how an artist could go from someone who draws to someone who gets paid to draw. I did know that you can because comics, animation, ca cartoons have existed for a long time. And so, uh, so I knew that somebody had to draw that. I didn't know that that was a job. That's crazy. And at, at the time I grew up in the place I grew up, East LA, uh, resources was not something that was just around and available in those days. So I, I didn't have any ideas. However, I came to Atlanta in the early 90s. And, uh, and so I, I walked through a tattoo shop one time. I said, hey, uh, oh, no, as a matter of fact, I know what it was. A friend of mine, kept, uh, was, we were hanging out together. I had my backpack with all my sketchbooks in it because I always carry my sketchbooks. I don't have a degree, but I got proof that I can draw. 
And so one time he pulls up in front of a tattoo shop and he says, go in there and show them your work. And I said, what are you talking about? And he says, yeah, go in there and show them work. I didn't know that he was taking me to a tattoo shop. So I walked in there. I was like, well, I'm not scared to talk. You know, I'll go in and talk about my work and see what they say. And so I walked in there and I said, hey, how you doing? I'm Dan. And now, of course, in those days, you know, your experience is going to be a very different if you did that today. Because in those days, there were five tattoo shops in the whole <laughs> state of Georgia. Now there's five tattoo shops in every neighborhood. So <laughs> it's very common now. Now we all get to have tattoos, which is great. I'm happy for that. But in those days, it was, uh, it was a, a, th- a different um, in, uh, mindset for it. So I walk in there and say, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm Dan. And uh, I just came in to show you my sketchbook. And they said, do you want to learn how to do tattoos? I'm like, yes. And then the next question was, do you like hurting people? And, uh, and so I stopped for a second. I was frozen in time. I was like, what? Like, what do you know about me? No, it's like, uh, <laughs> and I have, was just in the Marine Corps like a couple of years before that. So I was like, I don't know what you're asking. And they're like, oh, because you, because uh, tattoos hurt. And I said, oh, because of the needle and stuff. I got it. I get it. Okay. okay that kind of thing. And so, and so they offered to teach me and uh, I lasted there two weeks. I quit <laughs> because <laughs> I, they were yelling at me. I'm telling you, I was fresh out of the Marine Corps a year or two before. I, I told myself I would never let anyone else yell at me again. And so the moment that happened inside that tattoo shop, which is normal now I know, going through apprenticeships and having that, what that hazing experience, uh, that they're going to yell at you, they're going to mistreat you and so on. Well, I wasn't with it, so I walked out. Um, that same day, I found a business card for another tattoo shop. I called them up, said, hey, I want to check you out. And I tried the same thing. But now I kind of knew what I was looking for. And I was there for a year and a half with my apprenticeship and uh, doing tattoos. So the whole experience is exactly what it's like to become a professional artist in any field. Lots of drawing, constantly, constantly, constantly drawing, drawing, drawing. Um, I was there a week. I got my first tattoo. Uh, the second week I was there, I got my second tattoo. Uh, by the third week, I had a whole sketchbook full of that two tattoos that I wanted to get. And for the next five years, I was getting tattoos all the time, all the time. If we didn't have customers that day, we would tattoo each other just because that is part of the learning process and getting all the ideas out to understand what you're doing, how you're, how you're doing it, how does it heal, does it look right, does it so on and so forth. And so by the time um, I left that first tattoo shop, I opened my own tattoo shop and I had that uh, for eight years, me and my brother-in-law, who was just my best friend at that time. I married his sister and he made this hat. So there you go. I, I'm gonna say a good Whoa. thing. You know, and I, <laughs> Wonderful. A shout Every, he made look at that hat, circle, the circle closes. <laughs> I had to recover this moment from this moment um uh, but yeah so he was he's my best friend uh and we we traveled the country doing tattoos like we were really hardcore deep into how can i do this thing that i know how to do on paper on skin and let me tell you those days those days what you got tattooed it came from a piece on a drawing on the wall for a drawing that had been sitting there for 50 years so tattooing was not what it is today. And so we went at it. We just went hardcore with it. After eight years, my uh, mindset shifted for my art. And, uh, and I don't like sitting around waiting for people to walk through the door. I like to, to get into creative mode and create. And so I, like 10 years ago, I committed to just work on an illustration. No more website building, no more flyers, no more posters. No more anything else that, that people need in the business world. I am going to focus on illustrations only. I draw, 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 draw. And it's worked well for me. Behance is a big, big part of that in that my portfolio on Behance, uh, I have it. I, I, I keep tweaking it so that it has like the top level stuff that I can show the world so that I can find top level clients that then engage with me and we can have a great business relationship where I just get to draw. So there it is in a, in a quick nutshell. I don't Amazing. Since we got the story, we got the story. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. amazing. 
So we have a, a safe saying, uh, I have a question. So safe, of course, feel free to ask your questions. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled in the chat for your questions coming up. Uh, and I want to remind everybody that we're going to have the artist spotlight coming towards the end of this stream. So feel free to go ahead and use the artist spotlight tab located at the top of the chat, just above uh, the chat in order to promote the artist that you would like to see featured here at Adobe Live during the artist spotlight. And we're going to have a artist spotlight moment today and tomorrow. So uh, double the glam with the artist spotlight. And of course, I always suggest to, uh, you know, share the artist that you want to be featured, that you want to see featured. Uh, we see, uh, we saw a lot of love, by the way, uh, for Mexi Funk before, uh, and also mm -hmm. Lauren Holm that we mentioned. And Wade, thanks again for sharing all the useful links. Thank you, Wade. Thank you, Wade. And um, we have a, a let's see, let's see if there is a. That was the here. second question, and I, and I, and I yes, I I'm gonna get forgot. to that. I'm, I'm gonna get to that. I'm just trying to follow, follow safe just because the messages were like one after the other, so I'm trying to catch up here. Um, so it's the first time that he's watching the stream and he was asking, uh, suggesting how to post. So, say if you're looking to post your own work and you want to promote yourself, that artist spotlight tab is the way to go. So, click on the artist spotlight, and there you'll be able, of course, to feature yourself. So, if you do, uh, sorry, to to pro, to to post and, and uh, uh, yourself and propose yourself for the artist spotlight. So, if you do want to promote your work. That's the tab that you want to hit. Uh, the chat is more for questions regarding the process. Today we're working in Fresco, um, but tomorrow we're going to jump into Illustrator. Dan is going to teach us the amazing way in which we can jump from Fresco into Illustrator Desktop. We're going to have the magic happening live. Uh, so stay tuned for day two tomorrow because that's how we're going to open uh, most likely our day. Um, and uh, Today, you can also ask about, you know, questions about like we would just see uh, and the background and the stories and about career. So that's the place, safe place to learn about graphic design, illustrations, style, uh, whatever you want regarding all these wonderful creative topics. And uh, a little bit brief, I'm going to reply to a quick question that uh, appeared in the chat a few times about the pillows behind me. Those are pillows uh, from Adobe's. I used to hang out. Uh, in San Jose at the uh, Adobe headquarters a few years back, going visiting, and that's where I got the majority of the pillows. Um, and uh, I think that you'll be able to um, mm. buy some of them when the uh, Adobe Max uh, website transforms itself into the real Max experience. I believe that there's going to be a shop, so you'll be able to uh, purchase the pillows there if you like. And um, the question going back to you is, uh, Dan, uh, to focus on how to create a character and if there are any rules when creating a character so that was oh there you go that's two. right that's right thank you i'm glad to have a a host because i i forget <laughs> that's good <laughs> and it's a great question um so so part of the process of uh, creating a character is not just your your uh building blocks right the layers but also um paying attention to shapes and so because I did not go to school, I did not take art classes. I see this all the time that artists say this, character artists, they say this, and I don't do that. However, um, it's, it is uh, something to keep in mind. And basically, there's, a, there's a, a school of thought that says that round characters are friendly, pointy characters are the anti-hero or evil, and then, and then you have a, a mash of uh, different types of um, the, uh, what do you call it, trope that makes up the trope of your characters, right? And so it's by going through this that looking at, uh, at the, your, the shapes of your characters, people automatically, when they see it, they have a feeling. And, when, and, and, and then the storyline and the way the character acts will then reinforce that feeling. So if it's a friendly character, it's if it's a hero and it has a lot of round shapes about it, then, uh, then as the story unfolds, people already feel comfortable and, and start to root for that character. So there are a few rules about it. I, uh, I am not an advocate for school. I'm sorry. I feel that you should try and see what it looks like for you. As you can see, I got 
curves. I got squares. The body started as a curve. Um, and, uh, and I go with what works for me. As, you, as some of you have said that you like the character, that you like what you see here, um, then that's, that's what my process kind of comes into. What can I tell ab about this character right now that enhances the story by what you see? And I'm and... going to pause you a second, just because there is a question coming live through the chat, which I think is perfect for this moment, mm -hmm. uh, from Anthony, uh, asking, how do you add personality to your character? So There you go. And so, and it is through that personality. Glad you asked that question because that kind of helps uh, put that I saw the moment. together. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm glad you guys are thinking too because I don't have all the answers. Uh, but it is that is it that you add character by adding elements. Who is this person? Who is this thing? What are they doing? Where do they come from? Where are they going? Why do I care? And see, I made you all care, all of you. I've been playing <laughs> mind tricks, okay? I've been playing mind tricks because I told you he's Who an needs artist. music at a live? <laughs> <laughs> we got Dan also as a band. <laughs> That's right. I told you that he's an artist. And so you are out here and be hands because you're an artist. You're creative of some kind. So that already made him a part of you, a part of who you are, you a part of your tribe, a part of your type of people that you like to hang out with. Bam. And we have your pencil and his pencil that ties it back to your That's video it. there. Mm -hmm. On that brand. Is how On you create. brand. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. That's how you create memorable characters by making sure that things are identifiable, that what we're looking at, we can understand. And it somehow identifies with us, which is you know, this right now, this exercise today was easy because we're on Behance and it's the artist created place. But when you're producing a, a character for a children's book, a comic book animation or something, when you start creating these characters, you first look at yourself. Do I like this character? Is this a character that I'm interested in? And as you start answering those questions and about why that character exists, who is it, where they come from, where they're going, then you start to identify, well, who out there is going to like this character? And, and they're going to be people like you, which is why you focus on yourself first. Tr make it real. We were saying this earlier before we went live. Be authentic. Be yourself. <laughs> Bring of yourself into this drawing. Don't think of the gimmicks and, and what's, what's hot out there because those come and go and they come and go because they're reflected on a particular person, a persona that's that, that maybe the originator thought it through and that's where they came from, or it was a big old marketing PR machine driving it. Who knows? But, but it's still, there is, must the be time... still a person, you know, that's what I keep, you know, to, to share. I completely agree with you. And that's what I keep saying, even behind PR campaign there, you know, even if we don't know the name of the person that is behind it, it starts with a person as much as, you know, this uh, machine can replace everything. They cannot replace human creativity. I'm a strong believer of that. That will be the mm -hmm. hardest thing to generate. Um, and, uh, you know, it's someone that is bold enough to bring their ideas there. So be brave and be yourself. I'm always, you know, super convinced um, of that. And I'm actually going to give you a little sneaky, sneaky preview about one of my Adobe Max session, which is uh, that's, that's like that's literally preview of the preview. I'm not going to go in depth because you're going to go ahead and have the the actually the, the sessions there. But I actually spoke about spoke about my origin and, you know, a, a lot of people talk about my weird Italian accent. So I took everybody to Italy with me during uh. during uh, uh, during the session. I took them everybody to my my small village where I'm from. So that's a little like world preview <laughs> nice. about the session and um I, I love what bliss is saying in the chat uh i am sketchy we are sketchy <laughs> yes 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 we are sketchy look at that but yes and so see so okay so that preview that you're uh telling us about uh when your adobe max sessions is like that's you bringing yourself you have to bring something of yourself as time goes on your talent 
will 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 have in its own evolution. Your levels are gonna change depending on what you're trying to do. Like like when I went from traditional to digital, my skill level went back down to the beginning. Like I had to work that up, and so so that's gonna fluctuate and it's gonna have changes. But the one thing that's gonna be constant and it's gonna serve you well is who you are. This art world, all this community, all of these people accept you. They accept what you're about, what you're doing, if you are ready to share. And that's what we have to bring into the art industry. We want to bring ourselves. We want to give of ourselves. And then, and that in itself keeps uh, the creativity honest. We're here to learn. We're here to have fun. And, you know, who knows? Some of us can, can be rich and famous like Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> You lost me there. You lost me. You lost me at the end. I was like following you. <laughs> and uh, talking about the love, then I wanted to share a comment from um, Paloma, and you know the love of the community and the love and caring uh, mm -hmm. about the art. Paloma is saying, "I woke up at two a.m. this weekend and selected my sessions, and I could not fall back to sleep because I was so excited." I mm -hmm. strongly believe that that's. You know, those are the people that build a community and uh, that's what we should focus on. And that's why um, I think that exactly what you're saying in terms of being brave and being yourself is, is what, what matters. Because uh, mm -hmm. people that care will care. And, and I don't, you know, I, I, I think a lot, I've, I've seen a lot of people talking about, you know, good people, but I, I don't believe that at all. I just believe that people may have your interest at heart and some don't. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that we're pretty much all the same. It's just we care about different things. Uh, so people that will care about what you're doing have, this, have the same interests or in common, you know, they'll, they'll be there rooting for you and, and following your path. And, and those are the people that, that you want. And, and there's going to be so many others that they're not aware of it that will fall in love with it. So, you know, mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to share. And I am loving those lines. I mean, I'm sorry. I got to stop <laughs> saying whatever I'm saying because... A lot of things is happening on screen. Tell us uh -huh. more then, please. So, so What's we going have moved on? Into, yes, yes, yes. So we have moved into the uh, vector lines. And this is where Adobe Draw, Adobe Lines, and uh, I keep forgetting the other ones, uh, Adobe Ideas, is where when I started to draw with the iPad, this is before the iPad Pro, I was like, okay, I want to learn digital. I want to do digital work. And, uh, and these vector brushes, I don't know, I, I should have like taken the time and maybe I will do a little research like who made these? Like whose idea at Adobe was it like, yeah, we're gonna make some vector uh, brushes that behave a little weird and uh, when you draw. And, uh, and so I couldn't figure it out. I was like, why, why, is, why is this, this not working like it does on markers on paper? And I had to have that mental shift and say, you know, we're not in Kansas anymore. This is a new world. We got to figure this out. And so no, no, no uh, big, big ups to people in Kansas. But it's like you have to figure out like, OK, this is a different medium. How do we use this medium? And so these vector brushes are amazing. Number one. And, and by the way, sorry, already... sorry, pa pause, pause a second. Uh, we are on Fresco right now. So for those of you who just joined us, in particular, Linda was asking, we are right now on Fresco. And please yes. go ahead then. There you go. That's right. Yes. So I was just mentioning these other apps because Adobe developed these uh, brushes and then put it all together. In Adobe Fresco, they brought in all these different elements from different apps, put them together, which is super amazing. And, uh, and so these vector brushes to me are what helps me bridge that gap between the traditional and the digital because for over 20 years, I've been using Adobe Illustrator. And so I've been a vector artist for a long time. I love Illustrator. The day I realized that in Illustrator that you can, if, if you draw a line, if you don't like that line, you can pick up that line and move it, okay? Once I realized that, I was like, what? I don't have to even erase it and do it again. I can just pick it up and move it. That's the day. And because you can like exp transform the size of the drawing and still be sharp and clear. That's the day that I was hooked. So when uh, Fresco brought in these brushes, I was already familiar with them. I, I had already used them. As a matter of fact, two years ago, when I went to Adobe Max in person, I was uh, one of the demo artists on the vendor's floor. I was hanging out 
for two, three days, three, three days. So we must have been like back to back because I was in the, I, I was uh, at the Photoshop desktop floor in the community okay, yeah, pavilion. And you know, uh, when all the action is happening, that's when I was sitting there drawing. So I couldn't hang out and see what oh. was really going on. I was only w walking around when it was a break and we were, oh, and no, there was no same here. That, that's what I'm yeah. saying. We must have been, we must have been back to back. Cause I was, yeah. I was working at the Photoshop desktop floor nice. uh, doing demos for Photoshop. So we must've yep. been literally back to back and we didn't know yeah. each other. And here we are. <laughs> that's it. There you go. Right. It comes around. That's why it pays to be nice. Be nice. Please be nice. You never know when you oh, find course. someone. Uh, that's, and so, uh, that's sorry sorry that's you, you i think I, i'm i'm loving to discover more and more about you i think we have a lot in common okay. i do think that um you know um i'm hooked with kindness if you really want to fool me just be kind because that works right. <laughs> i love kindness i think that that you know that's something that really takes you a long way no matter what you do it, it that's right it will it will get you further uh into into a beneficial relationship so when I so when I went to Adobe Max, I was using Adobe Draw, which now is being discontinued because everything you want in Adobe Draw is here and Fresco and more. But what I did was I drew uh, 18 portraits of different Adobe presenters and speakers for that year. And uh, I did the sketch in Adobe Sketch, Adobe Photoshop Sketch, and then I moved over into Adobe Illustrator Draw. And then I fit, and then I did all the vector art, exported into Illustrator, and then I cleaned it up and made it into posters and so on. And so when I was in Adobe Max, I was showing off my portfolio and talking about how great of an artist I am. And that's when uh, they started talking about uh, Project Gemini, AKA Adobe Fresco. And so by then I was well-versed in how these brushes work. And so the one cool thing about these brushes, I'm sorry, I've got stories to go with every lesson. So <laughs> the way these brushes work is that uh, it's a vector brush, meaning kind of, um, it's kind of like an ink, but it's not a pixel brush and it's not a live brush. It is a vector brush that when you export this file and there's a little button up here on the top and then it says send to Illustrator right there. There it goes, it says send to Illustrator that when you send that off to Illustrator- And by the way, file, drum roll, drum roll there, because that's gonna happen tomorrow. What happens, yes, the right, line. yes. You sit there and stare at your computer for a couple of seconds. And Adobe and his uh, magnificent superpowers of the cloud will send this file from your iPad into the internet through Adobe. They do some crazy cartoon stuff and then it magically appears on your desktop. And now on Illustrator, all of these brush strokes, they are vectors and you see all the anchor points. We're gonna show that off tomorrow for, for, this, for the second half of this illustration where then I'm an illustrator and now I can add the superpowers of illustrator into my illustration and make that that much stronger and add extra effects, blend modes. And uh, especially, and I love the freeform gradient. Oh, I've been addicted to the freeform gradient <laughs> since they put it on illustrator. And so, and so to me, it's like, it falls right in my wheelhouse, right? I love working in Illustrator and now I have a tool like Fresco where I can have that organic, natural looking drawing strokes of my brush, of my pencil. And, and they, now they are an Illustrator and, uh, and I can add that goodness of Illustrator. And the last thing I like to add to this uh, brush is that before I go into the settings is that in uh, Adobe Illustrator, a few years ago, they added the blob brush, which to me was amazing because that means that on my Cintiq, I could use my pen and draw right in Illustrator. Oh my God, it's like, I love the pen tool. I'm all about the pads and uh, an uh, handles and anchor points. But when you start making your vector art have that, your identity, your, your character, your feel, then you're elevating that art style in itself. Whew. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So like I was going to say before, let's, I, I share the blue heart for you in the chat. So let's share some love for DTM in the chat. Go ahead and put a blue heart just to share your love. I like to do this just to share, share our support back to you, oh, our blue. amazing guest. And there was a, it was a, com a comment before about your positivity as well. Um, I believe from uh, Jess Talmanic. 
Uh, apparently, oh, I haven't yes. had the chance to watch one of your uh, private behinds, uh, but there is a lot of positivity talk uh, coming from you, which we love and, and we love to give you uh, some blue hearts back. So go ahead in the chat on b.net slash Adobe Live and share a blue heart in the chat or any color. I mean, it doesn't have to be blue. I just, I, I shared a blue heart just because you're all blue there. Yes. <laughs> and yes. we're working in That's fresco. So, you know, I like, you oh, we have, we have, we have blue hearts rain. <laughs> they are raining Yay. in the chat. Go ahead. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we love your positivity and we, uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and let the chat let those blue heart rain for you, DTM. And in the meantime, yeah. I think I'm going to let you go ahead and talk us more about the brush settings. All right. So when you select your brush that you want to use, you can um, uh, select, you have a few different brushes that you can pick from. All of them have a little distinct style depending on what you're after. And, uh, and if you're into writing letters, um, you know, you got that, the chisels, um, there's the, the basic terminal, but then you got some the, the chisel and so on. Uh, and so what I like, and then there's uh, these funky ones, it's got a, um, um, a taper on the end and so on. What I like is uh, the basic taper. And the only reason why I like the basic taper is because that's what I've been using for the past few years with uh, the other Adobe apps. And so when I found it here, I was like, just leave me to that one. And I'm good. Sometimes I do want the, the basic round so that there's uh, the, the, the line has those rounded corners. And so, but whichever one you choose, this is what you really want. What you want to do is to take over the settings, the brush settings. And so let me close the, the brushes. And now I have the brush settings. And when I'm looking at the brush settings, and this I learned from watching Fresh Cake, another great live oh. streamer here on B hands. Oh my gosh. Um you 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 are like hitting close to home. I literally messaged him, I think it was this morning, uh, about his last post. So go ahead and check Fresh Cake out on Instagram. One of his late, latest illustrations, I don't know if you've seen it with a, a head that becomes a balloon that flows away. I was just like <laughs> I was just waking up and I was like, oh, oh, oh and I had to message him because I love, you know, that's what you were talking about, the feeling. Yeah. that you communicate with it and mm -hmm. i was just like that's so much beauty yep. cuteness within like four <laughs> instagram slides or whatever they're called but i love that so let's go there ahead and go. check 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 him out as well because that's i i love that you are uh, sharing the love not only to us but all these other amazing creatives um yes. that we can go and check out so thank you so much then for for mentioning everybody i'm really horrible right. with names so thankfully <laughs> you're there <laughs> it takes me a while to remember people's names the first question i ask is like hey did you pay me money if you pay me money <laughs> i should remember your name um uh, but no this is good uh i enjoy uh watching and learning from others and this is what i learned from fresh cake which is why i mentioned him. uh he's a super talented artist i'm like, amazing but i noticed that when he draws his uh, line weight will not change. And I'm like, how do you do that? Because, because the Apple Pencil is made to support pressure. And, uh, and so what happens is inside of the brush settings that you choose when it comes to the vector brushes, you have a few options. One of them I turn off is the velocity. The velocity dynamics means that I, if I draw slow, the brush draws one way. But if I draw fast, the brush stroke it gets tiny. I don't want that. And I'm a fast drawer, which is why I had to pay attention to that. How can I draw fast and not lose that line weight that I'm after? So I had to turn off the velocity dynamics. I'm kind of crazy because even on the pencils, sometimes I turn off the tilt because I want what I want out of the brush stroke. And, uh, and that's what settings are for, for you to adjust them so you can get that brush stroke you want. So the second thing I have adjusted is uh, the pressure dynamics. So I click on that pressure dynamics and right now it's at 44%. If I kick it back up to hundred, where it's normally set to, it comes automatically at hundred. What happens is that you get wildly differing uh, size, line weight size, depending on how hard you press. And I forget how many, you know, uh, points of pressure the Apple Pencil has, and I do have the M1 iPad Pro. So, uh, but well, the only thing I pay attention to is, can I get the drawing the way I want? 
if I can get the drawing that way I want, show me how I can make those adjustments. And so one thing that I did was by paying attention to uh, Fresh Keg, I was like, what is he doing that I don't, I'm not doing with my brushes? What is he doing? And so uh, Odari, another friend of mine who streams, uh, we were like, we were, we're deep into fresco and like, we, we should be better at this. We should be better at this. And it occurred to me, you know what? Let's check our settings. And that's what I did. So I turned down my settings into like around the fifties and forties. And then what happens is that you still get that taper and pressure sensitivity, but when you press firmly and you make a line, now your line is one consistent size. And if you want to change your line weight, then it's easy to just on the left hand side to tap the number and slowly move the number up and down the little slider. And so now I have a whole nother different um, line weight. And so once I realized that, I said, okay, let me take advantage of this. And because I like to draw fast, I don't uh, want to spend a lot of time in my settings. That's the one thing about me when it comes to drawing. I really love the pencil and paper. I got to understand the kind of paper I like to draw in. I like to I understand the type of pencils I like to draw with because I can get that consistency and I can stop trying to fight the art materials. Now we work together. This is my partners. The pencil is my partner. <laughs> Don't fight it. So I had to figure out like, how can I make these adjustments in the app so that I can get the kind of lines and drawing styles that is going to work for me. And so there it is. Go into your brush settings by first, um, make sure you have the brush you want. And then you always click on that little star so that it's in your list of favorites. Once you find a brush you like, click on it. I saw Kyle was uh, sharing some insights into the mega brushes uh, this morning with Photoshop. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, use these tools so that you can find what you're looking for. Because if you're looking through the mega brush, mega pack, looking for that one brush, it's going to be a while. It's going to, it, it kind of takes you out that creative zone. So make sure you favorite it. Once you have that brush you want, check your settings. All the way in the bottom is the little uh, sliders, the pencil brush with the brush icon, tap it. And then you have your brush settings and you can just move that whole little window out the way so you can see it. Boom, I don't mess with my roundness. I want it round. I don't mess with my angles. I leave it where it's, uh, it's already set to 90 or whatever. I, I, I may not get it right. There it goes. Um, <laughs> I leave everything my length, uh, the taper. I'm cool with that, but I have I made adjustments to the taper sometimes. So I don't know if it's at 50% when you open your settings or not. But yes, there we go. Go in here and start playing. And of course, you know, you can see uh, your stylus pressure by clicking on the little test area. And, uh, and seeing whether or not you get the brush stroke you want. And if you're into that math and you can kind of see, oops, you can kind of see like the little, uh, these things here, I don't know. I, 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 I go ahead and draw and it's like, bam, let me <laughs> go ahead and get Boom. what I want. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna stop you a second there, Dan. Thank you so much for all these um, uh, brush juice goodness uh, but I wanted to mention a few things so first of all when I was talking about the character with a balloon I misquoted because I get confused about it again thankfully I did say that I'm horrible with remembering names so I can stay <laughs> true to my statement and in fact I did um, uh, of course I do love it fresh cake and we have Wade Acuff uh, sharing the link on b.net slash out of live if you're watching to, from YouTube head to the chat and you'll be able to access the link directly to his Instagram. The artist that I was uh, describing the artwork from is another one that I'm sure uh, I'm actually going to go ahead because I, I was going to go and message um, it fresh cake right away telling, hey, mm. we're saying hi to you at Adobe Live uh, because we were I think we were all together uh, during one of um, Adobe events last year, I think is uh, was made made with a illustrator on iPad. We were all together participating to this fun event. But the artist that I was actually, uh, you know, describing with a, a head in the colorful balloon that flies away is Burnt Toast Creative. So that's mm. another amazing character designer. Uh, so go ahead and check them all out because I just needed to make sure that I allocated the right art to the right artist. Because yes. <laughs> clearly I uh, misspoke in terms of names. The, other amazing artists go and check both of them out they are absolutely amazing and 
I needed to specify for those of you, I know that, you know, uh, Kyle, we know Kyle and we know Kyle brushes as if they are a, a life of their own, a personality of their own. But I do want to make sure to, uh, you know, introduce for those who do not yet, uh, Kyle Webster, the creator of thousands and thousands of brushes and brushes collection. And also mm -hmm. Wade has mm -hmm. shared for us the link that take us to the download for the brushes in order to uh, download it right away. And remember, if you do have a, also a Photoshop desktop open and you download any of the brushes, once you download the, the file and you double click on it, it will be automatically available also in Photoshop. So we have the link there for you to go and check out all these wonderful brushes from the amazing Kyle uh, Webster. So fantastic. I have Burn Tours Creative Instagram there as well. That's it. I'm going to get awesome. it back to you. I can see um, that there is a, a lot of details at the moment going on. Yes. Uh, so back to the brushes. Uh, big ups to those artists that uh, Claudia mentioned. I admire them all. And, uh, and I try to study what they're doing so I can learn more. Uh, so back to these brushes is that what I'm doing now is that I'm trying to keep a consistent line weight for the bigger shapes, the bigger... Uh, outline areas and then I'm going in with a thinner line to do a little bit of the detail and so an, another great thing of vector brushes is that if you have to have this line like I need a line right here right but I don't want that line to end in a taper like I don't want that what I want is a, a one solid line to go through like that maybe not that one but there we go bam so so then what I can do is I go go ahead and draw through and I use my touch modifier. You want this little guy. And so if you don't see yours, you can click on your app settings and, uh, and there it is, touch shortcut. It's right there, touch shortcut. So I can turn it off or turn it on. And so I have mine on because when you use this touch modifier, I, st I still have the brush, the vector brush selected and I can double tap that touch modifier and turn it on. Now I can tap it one more time so I can have the outside blue ring. And then I can just draw a line right over that brush stroke that I don't want. And bam, because it intersected another vector line, you can get rid of, and now to uh, reset it, I can just tap around. So there it is. And so if I want, uh, if I want to get rid of these outside lines, I double tap my touch modifier, there you go. Now make sure it's the outside ring is on and I can slowly tap away the extra pieces that I don't want. There it goes, doom, doom, x Fantastic. And so that is the magic of vector brushes. And so you're gonna see me using this touch modifier a lot. I can double tap it and then just kind of draw right over that X and it's gone. Now, of course I can double tap and, 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 and to, uh, go back to my regular brush. So sometimes I just like tapping that the uh, different tool and then tapping back into my brush tool, the vector brush, so that it's faster because I, I am right-handed. So the pencil stays in my right hand and I don't like going across my body a lot. So I will use that non-dominant hand to do extra things on the screen. So there we go. Bam, just like that. And I have a question oh. for you then. Do you use a keyboard as well? No, I don't. I don't. I admire those who do, but uh, I, I, my iPad is strictly for drawing. Mm -hmm. I have computers. I have a MacBook Air here next to me. I have an iMac there. I do regular work on regular computers with regular keyboards. Um, but uh, when it comes on the on the iPad, um, no. If it's if it's some, there's something that requires me to type a lot, I'm pulling out a computer. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. I, I currently do not have um, for the same reason because I, I tend to use the iPad mainly for drawing, although I do not share them. I'm, I'm still uh, I do a lot of graphic design. I do not share many of, of my illustrations uh, besides the book. They usually come in a printed form <laughs> right away. Mm -hmm. I go all out or I hide. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I don't have a I don't have the the keyboard, so I was wondering what's your work uh, process yeah. is like. Although, if you do have a keyboard for your iPad, 
all these shortcuts. Uh, and I know that for sure for uh, Illustrator on the iPad, you can use all the wonderful shortcuts so you mm. can keep your workflow consistent within your desktop environment and your tablet environment using the same shortcuts. So they work, they're amazing, they're so useful. Uh, and with this, I want to remind everybody that in about five minutes, can you believe it, Dan? Time is Already? so fast. In oh five minutes, we have the artist spotlight. So hold on time, everybody, because that is coming today. And again, if you do want to share anybody, artists that you, anybody that you want to promote here during the artist spotlight, include it. And of course, include it yourself. Go ahead and hit the hearty spotlight tab located on top of the chat on b.net slash Adobe Live. So you'll be able to promote your favorite artist and uh, let it have a feature here at Adobe Live. And of course, don't be shy and promote yourself. That's the place to go. Nice. Nice. Uh, yes, uh, the the uh, time flies by, goes by fast when we're having fun, right? Uh, I'm just enjoying yes. myself. And, and uh, yeah. I have a question regarding saving brushes. Uh, I think there was a conversation George Carmona, here it is. Is there a way to keep the settings? If I close the app and come back later, I'll have to reset the brushes. So it, it when you leave and come back to the same drawing, uh, there was an update recently, and that is uh, one of the main features in uh, one of the recent updates is that when you come back to the same drawing, all your settings are the way you left them. Um, when you create a new document, your brush settings are still there, but you won't have those certain tools selected as if when you were uh, just drawing in a uh, file that you closed. So yes and yes and kind of yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so feel comfortable knowing that when you make adjustments, and especially when you make sure that you add to your favorites, this is where what you want to do. You want to make sure you add to your favorites so that way Whenever you create a new document, you always have those favorites ready to go so that you don't have to sit there and dig through. And let me tell you, there's a ton of, uh, once you sync your device to the cloud, like look at my, my I got dry media, some uh, brushes, Keith Heron brushes, Mega Pack. I don't know how I got the Mega Pack twice, but uh, that's probably because <laughs> I clicked on it too many times. In any case, that's 139 brushes. I want to hop on Fresco and get to drawing. I don't want to have to sit there. You know, I guess sometimes you do. I do that with music. Like I'll, I'll end up spending time working on the playlist instead of drawing. But like this is the music that I want to listen to when I'm drawing. And then you end up listening to music. I mean, you could do that too, right? You want to go through all the brushes and play with them. But sometimes you want to hop right on. And so make sure you favorite them, favorite them, favorite them. Maybe that can be like a specific session, you know, play with brushes. And in fact, I believe that there is an Adobe Live session, which is called Brush Hour uh, with Kyle. So there is actually, it was actually live three hours ago. So if you just want to, that's perfect, mm -hmm. perfect timing. So if you just scroll down again on b.net slash Adobe Live, just below us, um, there will be a strip of um, live streams called what's new and in the what's new uh reel you will see that we have a, a brush hour with kyle webster and the stream is called making sense of the mega pack so if you do want to uh, have a little bit more of a discover and discovery time of the mega pack that's the stream for you fantastic yep. i think that we that that was perfect timing for nice segue huh yeah that's <laughs> perfect that look Adobe Live is, you know, there is always, I always say it and I mean it and that now you can discover, you just have to just have a look to understand the beauty of the way that the, all those streams are structured and put together there. And, and again, like I'm going to use this second to give a big shout out to the wonderful team that works behind the scene to make all this wonderful stream happening, to have all these wonderful guests from all over the world coming together. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, time, wonderful team that allow us to enjoy the beauty of working together with the wonderful Adobe apps. So lots of love to Adobe Live. Woohoo! Good <laughs> job, Adobe Live. Awesome, awesome. You guys are super awesome. I, I got a chance to look at behind the scenes when I was at Adobe Max two years ago, and they had this whole beautiful setup, the lights, the desk. I'm like, yes, I want to be there one day. 
then I like I'm sure our path has crossed many times because I was presenting the deer <laughs> on the floor. I was there with a wonderful, lovely, sweet Kathleen Martin, another, you know, go and check out her beautiful heart. And I follow her on her thrift uh, uh, outfits and illustrations on Instagram. I love her to bits. Uh, she runs a lot of uh, Photoshop daily creative challenges. I think is one of the most soothing voice of adobe live sometimes i just watch a stream to relax there she just go. put me in the mood to create heart I, I love kathleen lots of love to her and uh since we're already kind of um having a chat here and posing is literally 15 seconds to the artist spotlight so um if that's okay with you then we're gonna pause for a second make sure yeah. that we bring some love to the artist of the day which i'm gonna um, hopefully bring up in just a second here and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and uh, jump into my screen in order to oops i think i went i went too far here it is in order to reveal the artist of the day so everybody ready and everybody ready to share some love for the one and only uh tamika grooms so tamika that. is the artist featured today uh, as you can see from her profile on behance called behance.net slash tamika grooms that's super easy i love when people make things easy <laughs> with their <laughs> with the url i'm gonna zoom in into my page so you can see the url but i'm sure that uh um and it's going to be shared in the chat by Wade as well. We can uh, also see that our work is featured in Fresco as well. So that's another fantastic reason for you to share your work on Behance because you can get featured in the main pages, which is like, yeah, like having like a super badge. Um, then if you are uh, looking at the same page, please let me know and feel free to choose an artwork or a project that we can start Let's go with that go. first one. Let's go with that first Save one. Save the crash test dummies. Save the crash <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Poor crash test dummies. Here's something that uh, I like about uh, Tamika's um, projects and that she's working on. Oh, so you know her. On. Yes, I do know. Oh, wonderful. Her. Yes. Uh, and uh, she has been building this body of work that works well with children's books. And, uh, and this is one of those that uh, has made it into uh, the bookstores or wherever books are sold. I don't know what they're called. They're called bookstores. And, uh, and so, <laughs> as you can see, it's, uh, it was uh, written by someone else, Jennifer Swanson, and it was illustrated by Tamika Grooms. And as you click through any of the other ones, I just wanted to point this one out, is that uh, a lot of times, uh, two things, a lot of times as artists, we draw, we draw and partner up with projects that, you know, they're going to be world, 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 world renowned projects one day. And, uh, and it's very nice to see that your project you worked on actually made it. The other thing is that she's been working hard on getting that portfolio to fit that type of art style, uh, the type of character looks that goes well with children's books. And so if we want to click through the next, uh, any of the, uh, just looking at those uh, series of uh, um, projects there, uh, she is a, a very um, character driven, kids, children, illustration, artwork, and it starts to tell a story. So here we got some robots. Um, earlier, we had some skating uh, girls. And one of the other projects has a, uh, a Steam series that she made where uh, these little girls are um, like that, uh, is an engineer. The little girl is a scientist, uh, which is also falls in line with some of our passions with my wife and I, and uh, in that we teach um, coding and robotics for young girls age eight to 14 so that they can enter that STEAM field with things that they like to do. Yeah, so when you click on that, there it is, boom. And so it is very important that number one, you find your art style. Number two, that you take these elements, add them to your character so that it identifies who is this character? What is this character about? But the main part is that it brings a part of yourself into these drawings and that is Tamika right there that little girl is Tamika herself because Tamika is an engineer she is a real life engineer and uh and so it's uh it's like you're bringing a part of yourself bring in 
these visions to life of what you see your art world, the, the world to be. And so she also uh, streams and that's one of her streams Fantastic. where she went through that process of uh, creating these So characters. that ties in perfectly with the conversation that we were having before regarding, you know, bringing yourself into the drawing. And if you are talking to children, of course, you really want to bring the children into, into your actual artwork to make sure that right away at first glance, people can look at your artwork. And something else that I want to take from your comments and I always do try to share as much as possible when working with students and working in, uh, you know, in pro pro portfolios, uh, tips, tips and techniques rather than critiques. I like, I like to call it tips, tips and tips and tips and tricks for portfolios. <laughs> Make sure that you know, I rather see, or oh, I'm sure that our directors or people that want to hire you, they rather see few jobs which are tailored in what your passion is rather than see a uh, humongous amount of, of images that they won't even have the time to go through but they actually are confusing and don't really convey uh what is that you want to be hired for and mm -hmm. most importantly i think is the marfilo you're gonna be hired to do the things that you don't like to do if you show them so make right. sure that you take them away from your portfolio and they're just that juicy nice pieces that do represent you and represent the work that you be that you want to be hired for are there speaking loud uh for you so we absolutely everything is here i mean i think that this collection of characters from tamika speaks out loud in exactly representing representing that they talk about her they talk about her work and they talk about exactly what she wants to do which is illustrating for for children and not only in terms of shapes but also in terms of color palette we can appreciate here a color palette right away that is nice with these pastel colors but still bright and colorful that does talk to what that children mm -hmm. book illustration will be like and of course mm -hmm. we can right away hear here there is a more a bit of a uh you know a, a girl's palette that represent the sort of toys and uh, scenarios that that you we see in maybe when entering uh a room of a of a teenager and i love the idea of uh, associating that with uh, also a profession like an astronaut an engineer mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. so i absolutely absolutely love that and we have uh, examples of real life so again in your behance portfolio um tamika's artwork is wonderful and portfolio is so well structured in terms not only of having the beautiful artwork that coherently talk about what she wants to work but also we have a little bit of work in progress there starting from the actual photography which inspired her and then we have the sketch um on paper which you know it, it, it doesn't look as wonderful as the final product but that's the reality i always say you know it gets messy before it gets beautiful and that's the truth for everybody and i love when artists opened the curtains of the behind the scene and let us see uh through that what a, the, a real behind the scene looks like of a sketch and we can appreciate that and you know even different trials uh before mm -hmm. then having the actual final project here with all the photos that that inspire so uh, very, very amazing. Let's go ahead and check out another um, artwork. I love the robots one. I was really getting into the robots. But <laughs> let's go ahead and look at those at the, the featured one. So this one is is a little bit different from from the previous one. Is definitely have more of a painting characteristics here, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and we have all these blue highlights, which is I think a very unique. Uh, can you give us a little bit more of insight? In yes. This? So her um, original uh, medium is watercolors. Oh. Wow. And uh, and so so when you see her watercolor work, and this, I mentioned this earlier with about me, is that when I went from traditional to digital, is like I had to start at the bottom and work my way up. And so right now, uh, Tamika is discovering how to harness that live brushes and fresco, so that she can get that watercolor look in her drawings and and she does a good job here in some others that i've seen where this is the part of the process is not complete but eventually you get to the point where it's there's no lines i, I my, my background is comics and uh and so inevitably my artwork ends up having lines but when you look at tamika's work there's no lines there's no line outlining the face or the hair it's just the textures, the textures of the watercolors. It looks like a little bit more like oils, but there's a couple of different textures going on in here. And so she's shooting for the no line painting 
art style all inside of fresco absolutely fantastic and you know i love how um she did preserve that style so you know we have a little mm -hmm. bit of insight of her uh story again she didn't necessarily place there a watercolor uh, painting because, again, that's probably that's not where she's going right now. But we do have a, a feel of where the background in the in the drawing is from. And let's pick another one, and then uh, we'll have to go back to to you because uh, we, we'll have we'll have we'll have to time. yeah. Okay. We, <laughs> we, we have to go back to you to to um, bring the character, I think, I believe, as, as far as close as possible to launch him into Illustrator tomorrow. So but let, yes. let's pick another one. I'm really enjoying uh, Tamika portfolio. And by the way, let's go ahead and give it a follow. Uh, I'm just going to do the same right yes. here, right now. Yeah. Which uh, should we do the butterfly one? I really yes, let's go. One. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Imagination. <gasps> and, uh, oh, wow. And that. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. It's uh it's uh it's part of oh, the we process. got a little bit of seeing Tamika live. <laughs> there you go, well. that's right. <laughs> Do and, you know there uh, is any reason regarding the choice of the blue? Well, um some of us and I, I go with blue, red, or any other color, purple sometimes, is that in the traditional world, you get so used to all drawing with the number two pencil. But uh, when you're like a comic book artist or working in animation, you use different color pencils uh, as part of your creative process. I came across this one artist. He is my mentor now. Uh, his name is W. And he, his sketchbooks are all in colored pencils. And when I first met him in a size sketchbook, it's like, how do you do that? And it never occurred to me, wait a minute, we have color pencils. They exist. <laughs> so, so you don't have to sketch with a number two pencil. You can sketch with a different color pencil. And, uh, and so that is like a breakaway from any kind of standard and just say, let's try uh, uh, different things in our process and see what works for us. And it may unlock certain things in your, within your creativity. And so now a lot of us uh, use the blue pencil. I have another artist friend of mine and he draws in blue pencil every day, uh, the mad penciler on Instagram. And he constantly drawing with blue pencils, all mechanical blue pencils. That's all he does. Oh, and wow, so, wonderful. yeah, that is a theme and uh, ongoing theme with some of us artists. And yeah, I love it. I mean, in the meantime, while we're chatting, we have the actual pro process uh, happening with Tamika during the uh, the replay of the stream that she featured on her Behance page. Mm -hmm. I really love this. I love the, um, the title is really, uh, and the, the images are really representative of the story of the dragon and the, and, and the star coming through. By the way, I'm, I'm a big Marvel fun i know that you were mentioning uh batman before that's right uh, but i've watched one of the latest movie uh which is uh shang chi i believe it's called i hope i don't mess that name right again i'm not <laughs> the best in <laughs> terms of memory but uh, i'm not i don't want to give it away because i is you know it's just a brand new movie uh did you have you had a chance to, to look at it? No, know? I want to check it out. I'm going to check it I, out. I will say to anybody who draws and draws characters and love that sort of stuff, it's pretty much one of the best movies that I've watched in, in a long time. I finally got out of a theater being like, oh, excited. And, and I'm probably going to go and watch it again. And the reason why they... I'm connecting it to this because <laughs> the only thing that I'm going to give it away is that there is a dragon featured oh. into it. So... That's why I'm saying it brought me back to that magical world. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything anymore because you know, <laughs> I don't, don't want to give it away. But absolutely, it's a wonderful, wonderful movie. And that's how, you know, uh, creativity ties in together. I believe, you know, the creative magical world is, is one mm -hmm. creative world where we can all find our place to, to roam free with all our characters. And talking about characters, let's jump back into our Mr. Sketchy character uh, in order to see um, what we're going to get to today. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, Dan, no pressure. If you do not finish today, we have tomorrow. I know that tomorrow we are going to jump back into um, also creating uh, the actual final artwork in mm -hmm. Illustrator Dexter. Yep. Uh, so uh, that's going to happen tomorrow. So make sure to stay tuned for that happening tomorrow um, yes. here with Dan at Adobe Live. Uh, but, you know, if you if you have not finished today, we can also finish off whatever the work um, needs to be done here in Fresco. So take your time. 
Uh, I think that we have approximately, uh, I think, a bit less than 15 minutes. Less than 15 uh, minutes. All right. I'll knock it all out in 15 minutes. No. <laughs> Paco, feel free to give us like a heads up on the... <laughs> Uh, behind the scene, you know, to see how long how long do we have, I always get uh, lost in the beautiful beautiful work uh, yes. from from Dan. But um, I think we're ready to switch back into your uh, Go tablet. For Go for it. Switch us up. I'm already drawing. Uh, I have. Um, so what I'm doing now in this at this uh, stage, coo -coo -coo, what we're doing now at this stage is. Um, doing a line work. Like I said, I can't get away from lines. Uh, I practice for so long trying to get my lines straight. And especially when I do tattoos, I don't do tattoos as much anymore. But uh, when you draw and you do uh, draw on people and do tattoos, you need those clean, straight lines. You need, you need, you need to, to be clean and sharp with this, with that artwork. And so I practice, I practice and practice. And so now I can knock out the lines that I want that are going to represent different things in this drawing and uh and so that's what i am doing now like this is the, the step right here and uh and what i'm gonna do when i come back tomorrow is i'm gonna be further along so that way you don't sit here and watch me do all the colors and uh because you only need to see the step a couple of times before you understand it you're like okay i get it dan uh <laughs> we so. got a bit what is a baking show you know when you're right. putting the flour and then you got off the cake <laughs> that's right yeah 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 you break, break it out Put it, put the, put the cake in one oven, walk to the other <laughs> oven. It's like, it's done. There he goes. And <laughs> right. So I am going to um, have a little bit further along when I come back tomorrow. However, the process is the same um, in each one of these steps. Right now, it's the line work, right? So you saw me br br knocking out some lines. I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep outlining my character. And I do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, when I show you the, the coloring tomorrow, you'll notice that I will reuse a lot of the same layers over and over again and, and make adjustments to that layer so that when you're looking at the picture, it, it, it looks like it's, it's, it's all works together to give you that image where in reality, it's really a ton of layers all working together mm -hmm. um, to give you that illusion. And, you know, it, it took me a while to get to this point. I look at painters who paint in oils and uh, in watercolors and so on. And, uh, and you look at the painting and it's like, how did they get this haze? How did they get this, this, this sharpness or whatever technique? And, uh, and it's not because they sat there and drew it one time with the brush and like, perfect. It's because you layer your painting. You layer, you put layers of color, layers of texture, so that when the picture is finished, you look back and you're like, Okay, I get it. That looks good. And so I decided that, you know what? I'm going to do the same technique here with Fresco. I am going to work on my different elements and layer them so that at the end of the day, what you see is this one major image that, um, that tells the story. And, uh, but it took layers upon layers of layers to create it. And another secret I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, if you're into it, that's cool. You know, don't knock it. I don't knock anyone's process. However, me for myself, I do not use the masking um, options um, in Fresco. And they're, they're right here. Let me see if I can get this line done. Uh, right there. This is um, right there. This, this option right here. And, and so, in the meantime, then I, I just wanted to interrupt a second because we have a, before we move uh, away from this topic that we're, we're talking about, we have a, a Chico Chico um, telling us a little bit more about the blue pencil and saying, if you do want to uh, reproduce this old school style with a blue pencil, you want to check in your art store for a non-repro blue pencils. And the reason why the blue pencil was used in the past is so you, when you scan and use a scanning machine, the blue will not be uh, reproduced. You can make a photocopy and the blue doesn't show. Right. That's true. So that's, that's, that's true. super cool. Super, super My cool. My favorite uh, blue pencil is a Stedler. And uh, it's an amazing pencil. For a, <laughs> for a while, they stopped making them. So wherever I found them on the store, I would buy them. They're two, three dollar pencils. Uh, uh, you can buy for ten for a dollar. You can buy twenty number two pencils, but for a couple of dollars, it's going to cost you uh, for a good pencil like Stellar. But that's true. That is exactly 
um, what, uh, where they, the use of the blue pencil comes from. And so because I wanted to be a professional before I even knew how to do be a professional, mm -hmm. I said, I need a blue pencil. <laughs> Fake until you make it. That's right. If those guys over there are drawing with blue pencils, then I want to draw with a blue pencil. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Build your identity. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And boom, uh, boom. Right. I think we have like about five minutes. Okay. 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 Any other questions that we can answer? This is oh, the everybody's time. loving it. Uh, everybody's actually just saying yes. Boom, boom, boom. Cool, cool, cool. Well. <laughs> 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 And uh, oh, yeah. Chico Chico is saying uh, that's exactly how we worked 30 years ago. So we have like mm -hmm. a real um, progress. And Tiffany said, so glad I got to join today. We were having, uh, you know, a lot of positive, positive comments. Um, Wade Acuff was reminding about the artist spotlight tab above the chat. Yes, do not forget to use the artist spotlight to nominate your favorite artist or nominate yourself. Tomorrow, we're going to have another spotlight artist. So go, go ahead on behance.net slash Adobe Live and make sure to use that tab on top of the chat right now. That's when you have it available. So do it right now. Do not postpone it. Um, but th there is a, just a lot. Oh, we have we had a Tamika in the chat saying thank you, thank you, and thanks for the feature. That's amazing. So we had a lot of love for Tamika, and we have Tamika in the chat. I'm so glad actually, Dan, that you pointed out to those last minutes to the chat, so I had the chance to um, spot her comments. Hi, Tamika. It was very, very wonderful to see your work. I'm gonna go ahead and look at your, your workflows as well. And just we have a lot of love, lots of love for Tamika uh, during the stream and lots of love for you, Dan, and uh, the stream. Yes. yes. Lots of whoop, whoop, cool, cool, boom, boom. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, every time I stream, those, those, uh, those are my uh, little filler words, you know? <laughs> So I think it's amazing. It, it's important to say that because we do have about three, four minutes left. If you do have any questions that you want to ask about illustration, design, 2D, the 2D, 2D illustration, character design, freelance, and all the juicy stuff that we've been talking about. And by the way, uh, I use the word juicy a lot. That was my actual tag when I used to do graffiti oh, and oh. art. That, that uh -oh. was my name, my name in the <laughs> on the walls. Um, yes. So that's why I use that, that a lot. Uh, but yes, use these couple minutes to make sure that you hit that chat on b.net slash Adobe Live. And uh, I'll be able to pass your questions to Dan. Nice. We have so all that we say. Great job, homie. Awesome stream. Uh, DTM and Clady is Odari Johannes. Nice. That's my homeboy, Odari. He's working with me and Tamika too, uh, working with me on the Scullies. We're doing a oh, lot of Scullies. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Fantastic. yeah. Odari is an amazing artist uh, and I admire his color. His, the, his coloring is insane. You know, uh, me, I go with whatever color comes to me at that moment. Uh, his look wealth that out. I'm going to get to that one day. <laughs> <laughs> one step at a time. That's right. One thing I want to uh, point out before we go is that, look, he has pouches. Sketchy has pouches. In the <laughs> 90s, all the comic book characters had pouches. There was a brand new character called Cable. His name was Cable. And uh, oh, my goodness, if you look through the 90s drawings of Cable, there are pouches everywhere. So now in my drawings, they all have pouches. <laughs> Fantastic. And we have Jess saying, thank you so much for the positive vibes today, DTM and Claudi. Yes, I think that that's exactly where, you know, besides creativity, that's uh, where me and Dan really line up in terms of human, human vibes. Looks like we're positive, positive people. You know, my friends call me rainbow jelly. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I think that's a very quick picture of that positivity that you also uh, comes from you, Dan. Really, really nice. enjoyed it. I like that. We're going to have to schedule a whole nother series later where we do graffiti and you show oh, us yeah. your juicy skills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of luchador masks because I usually yes, have my Yes. Face. Oh, we can wear masks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> there is a very so iconic fun. iconic photo that I showed at the, my very first stream, which has uh, features me at the UN, all dressed up, ready to go. I look like as I'm 40, and I was probably in my early 20s. And then another one next to it with a wearing the luchador mask with my first piece of graffiti that I done in Manchester. And my, my line is always like, I was either gonna get fired or arrested, so I decided to change job and get into graphic yeah. design. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, design yeah. Sa- hashtag life. design saved my life. <laughs> there it is. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Art saved my life. Serious. You're right. It, it's it's such a powerful tool that um, it can focus your energy and passion into a positive way. Yes. And uh, I can see Julia. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you were okay. saying. I was going to say that uh, there was one live stream late last year. I think it was around Halloween. I put on my Darth Vader mask and I have a Batman mask. So there, we can wear some masks. <laughs> so before we get going, I want to say hello to Julia. She's in the chat and I was just about to mention her. Lots of love to you, Julie. Um, there uh, is the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge is coming right up after us. So make sure to stay tuned because uh, Julia Masaska is coming with the Daily Creative Challenge. And uh, right after, uh, there is a, a mobile app design with Sharon Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, please forgive me. But Dan, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing all these positive vibes in Fresco with a sketchy uh, today with you. And of course, everybody, don't forget that we're going to be back tomorrow here at 9.30 a.m. Pacific with Dan. Stay tuned. Go and grab yourself a coffee or a glass of water and come back to meet Julia for the Illustrator Daily Credit Challenge. Dan, thank you so much for today. And uh, I look forward to catch up with you tomorrow. See y'all tomorrow, everybody. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much, everybody. See you tomorrow.